We should understand the message of the Bhagavad Gita, however, is timeless. That Lord Krishna speaks the Bhagavad Gita eternally. And right now he's speaking the Bhagavad Gita in some other universe. So, the message of the Bhagavad Gita is not meant for just just for simply Arjuna, but it's for people all at all time, everywhere. So in the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna and the Arjuna Kamagam Pesavile, and Lata Kamila Jivara Sikhum Bhagavan Pesik. Lord Krishna himself will describe in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita how he had spoken this knowledge before to the sun god, Vivishman. The sun god gave the knowledge to Manu, the father of mankind, and then Manu gave the knowledge to Ikshvaku. And in this way the knowledge was delivered through the line of saintly kings or Rajashis. But in course of time the knowledge was lost and there was a need for Lord Krishna to come again and re-establish this message. So in the Knowledge got lost means that 
people started to change things, they started to add things and take things out. They didn't keep the real message of the Bhagavad Gita as it was. They changed everything. So in the So when they start to do things like that, then the message of the Bhagavad Gita no longer has any effect. No longer there's no longer any potency there in this message. So in the Bhagavad Gita, the Sakti And Srila Prabhupada always impressed it on all of us. He told us that do not change anything. Don't change, don't compromise, keep the standards which I have given you, Prabhupada would say. Of course, people always like to change things, you know, they're always thinking, oh, you know, we can do better than this, this is, this is not enough we can do better I will. and some one time we had one lady even she said krishna told her to write a new bhagavad gita because this bhagavad gita is old so Yes, Bhagavad Gita is an old message. It's the oldest. It's eternal knowledge. It, actually, it's timeless. It's not that it's old, it's eternal. And this message of Bhagavad Gita is very relevant to all of us today because it answers the questions about life. We see in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna coming into the middle of the battlefield and he's confused about his duty. What is he supposed to do? Should he fight or should he not fight? So in the so Arjuna has to make a decision and it's a difficult decision. Like all of us in the course of our lives, you have to make a deci make decisions. What am I going to do? Should I do this or should I do that? Arjuna has to make this decision. So, what does he do? He approaches Lord Krishna for help. So, Arjuna was lucky, of course, he had Lord Krishna personally with him, there to help him. At the same time, Arjuna was also an intelligent person and he was not just a passionate person who did things without thinking. He thought very carefully before he made decisions. Just like you know we should do when, when we are making decisions we should think that what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, what's going to happen if I do one thing, what will happen if I do the other thing. We have to think very carefully before we decide. And so for Arjuna, he was very fortunate that he could approach Lord Krishna and take guidance from him. And Lord Krishna is 
willing to be the teacher, not only for Arjuna, but he's there as a teacher for all of us. And his teachings are here in the form of this book, the Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna is uh, Arjuna Bhante Vadikati Yagirkindra. So Namala Bhante Pagar Pesi and the Gide and Ambarik Lady to the Vadikati Yaganabu Pinter. We should understand this Bhagavad Gita is the message. It, 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 it's not a sectarian message. It's not meant for just, you know, somebody may say this is just for Hindus. But actually it's for people everywhere. So in the Jnana Mandu or the Sadhana Mandu Namo, the Nariki Padade, the Kemana Valvila Namo, the Padade, or the Nama, the Sadhana Mandu Padade. You can see that Arjuna uh, came before Lord Krishna in a humble manner, asking Krishna to help him. And Lord Krishna takes the position of the teacher by, first of all, chastising Arjuna, calling Arjuna a fool, that he's being stupid. So in the Krishna the that is the nature of somebody who is a teacher, they will be strict, you know. Chanakya Pandit used to say that this, the, 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 the father and the teacher, they will not flatter their, te their student. They don't want to flatter them, rather they want to find the fault in them to encourage them to do better. So, so Lord Krishna told Arjuna that he was being stupid because he was mourning for something which was not worthy of grief. Arjuna was mourning for his material body. He was thinking only in terms of the body. And Lord Krishna points out to Arjuna that, that it's not worth it. You don't have to, there's no reason to lament about this body. So Arjuna was Lord Krishna points out the nature of the material body, that the body is temporary, it's going to die, all, everyone, where all of our bodies are going to die one day. But the soul is eternal, for the soul there is no birth and there is no death. So now what to put the Kalavendam in the Udalanda, Tarkarayamana, the Atma and the Nirvana, say the Kalavendam in the so, Lord Krishna, by explaining the difference between the body and the soul, Lord Krishna is able to counter one of Arjuna's arguments for not fighting. Arjuna was thinking he should be compassionate. He's thinking, you know, if I fight, it's not good, I should be kind and compassionate, I should be caring. But Lord Krishna points out, that's not required in this situation. Arjuna is a Kshatriya and he'd come to do a job. He was meant to fight. So Arjuna was a Kshatriya, and he was a Kshatriya. So Lord Krishna explains to Arjuna about karma yoga, the yoga of action, that by doing work as karma yoga, then there's no reactions to the work, and that defeats another of Arjuna's reasons for not fighting. So karma yoga meant that the Namariya Sayal, Namariya the Puruka Patanjali, the Sayal is Sariyana Mariya Sayal. Arjuna was thinking, if I fight, I'll get reactions, and I'll, if I kill people, injure people, it's going to give me bad karma, 
But Lord Krishna says, no, if you find this karma yoga, then there's no reactions. So in the course of the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is going to explain different yogas. Beginning with karma yoga, then he will explain jnana yoga, and then he will come to bhakti yoga. In this way he will describe how there's a progression in the practice of yoga. Just like you go up a ladder, so there's a ladder, the yoga ladder. You begin from karma yoga, you can come to jnana yoga, and you can go to even dhyana yoga, meditating, the yoga of meditation, and then come to the topmost rug on the ladder, bhakti yoga. So, in the course of the first six chapters, Lord Krishna explains his progression and he brings the conversation to the conclusion that bhakti yoga is at the top of the yoga ladder. The, the highest yogi is the one who works with devotion for Lord Krishna. Of course, he doesn't mention yoga for Lord Krishna or devotion for Lord Krishna, but he says just his devotion, devotion for the Supreme. Lord Krishna hasn't identified himself yet as the Supreme. That comes later. So, so the Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters and the first six chapters describe the yoga ladder and how bhakti yoga is at the top. Then the second six chapters are emphasizing bhakti yoga, the yoga of devotion. And the final six chapters of Bhagavad Gita are the yoga of knowledge and how that also leads to bhakti. So Lord Krishna has put the bhakti yoga in the middle of the Bhagavad Gita. Now sometimes people think because bhakti is in the middle, they think the important thing must be at the end. And they think sometimes that jnana yoga is superior to bhakti yoga. So, but it's not like that. Rather, it's like the sandwich. You know, you have a sandwich, you get some bread on the outside, and the good thing is in the middle. <laughs> or you get a cake, you know, you have cream cake, so the cream may be in the middle. And so, uh, the same way that the important part of the Bhagavad Gita is there in the middle, in chapter 7 to chapter 12. So, so in this way we understand bhakti yoga to be the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna is explaining what is bhakti yoga. In the first of all, in the seventh chapter, he explains about the different energy which the energy which he has, his internal energy his marginal energy and his external energy. So the external, Krishna's external energy, the elements of the material world, the earth, water, fire, air, ether, 
along with the subtle elements like mind and the intelligence and ego, this is all Krishna's external energy. So Krishna is very important to Shakti in the day, in the Kartu, Nere, Agayam, the Mariana Shakti, and Pati Bhagavan Mahana Rajendra. And then Krishna describes that there's another energy which are the living entities. They're the marginal energy. And that is the living entities. And Lord Krishna describes the nature of these all of us, living entities, that we are Krishna's energy, we are Krishna's prakriti. And we're struggling very hard with the material nature. We should understand why we're struggling with the material nature. The problem is we're trying to control and to exploit the material energy for our own purposes. We are also Krishna's energy and we are actually under the control of Krishna. But we are trying to act independently of them and that creates a problem. So in the seventh chapter, Lord Krishna explains, he introduces us to Bhakti Yoga and he explains it's important for us to hear about Krishna. So Krishna and the Yala Bhakti Yoga Bhakti facing in Dragon and Bhakti Jonathan. But to hear about Krishna means you have to hear from somebody who is the devotee of Krishna. If you don't hear from the person who is the devotee, then you may hear the wrong things. So Krishna Bhakti Namande Kariya Vendu Menda Namande Krishna De Bhaktar Gurudev Namande Kaita Vendu Vakada Namande. Just like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many, many editions of the Bhagavad Gita. But most of them are not authorized. Even though the person who has written his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita may be educated by material standards, if he is not a devotee, then he is not actually qualified to comment on Bhagavad Gita. In presenting the message of the Bhagavad Gita, we should present the message in line with the teachings of the great Acharyas and the saintly teachers who have taught this message of Bhagavad Gita. Teachers like Ramanuja Acharya, Madhvacharya, Nimbarka Acharya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta. So, if we are going to have a parampara, then we are going to have a the Bhagavad Gita must be presented through the disciplic succession. We want to comment on the Bhagavad Gita, we have to base the comments by hearing from the disciplic succession. So in the Jnana Mandu and the Guru Parampara, Sangli Todarvagi Yirkuriya, this, this Bhagavad Gita is called as it is. Other people, they write the Bhagavad Gita as they want it to be or as they think it is. 
They take Krishna's book to present their own philosophy and their own message. They, just like there was one famous comment, commentation on Bhagavad Gita, one uh, politician had written a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. And he was general, generally considered a very saintly person. He was a politician. He had been the president of India. And he wrote his comment Bhagavad Gita. So Lord Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita, just surrender to me. And he wrote in his commentary, it is not to Krishna which you should surrender, but to the unborn, unmanifested within Krishna. So that is a very serious misrepresentation of Lord Krishna's teachings. It's totally opposite. Lord Krishna said. So this is the problem in this age of Kali. The many people presenting their own message, but they use Lord Krishna's book to present their, their concocted philosophy. Srila Prabhupada used to say, if you want to be cheated, you'll find a cheater. So there are people who want to be cheated. They don't want to actually follow properly the standards which are presented by Lord Sri Krishna. They want to concoct their own ideas. Lord Krishna says, all men follow my path in all respects. So people think they can do whatever they like. They don't have to follow Krishna. And the result is, if you read these other comments on the Bhagavad Gita, nobody ever becomes a devotee of Lord Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada didn't simply write Bhagavad Gita, but he also taught the worship of Krishna and he also wrote the Krishna book. He didn't just only write Bhagavad Gita, but he wrote many other books all in relation to Lord Krishna. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Janma karma chami devyam evam yo veti tapvata. That one who can understand my birth and my activities, then tapvati ham puner janma neiti mamiti sarjana. Upon giving up this body, they will never take birth again. Sometimes devotees identify this verse as being the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Most important because give up, when we give up this body, we don't want to have to take birth again. We would like to get out from this world, birth and death. So 
So Lord Krishna goes on to describe his opulences, how whatever we remember at the end of life, that will be our destination in the next life. And then in the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna gives us the most confidential knowledge. The ninth chapter, that's the middle of the Bhagavad Gita, is like the heart of the Bhagavad Gita. And Lord Krishna gives us the most confidential knowledge that we should do four things. We should engage our mind in thinking of Krishna, we should become his devotee, we should offer obeisances to Krishna, and we should worship. So that verse comes at the end of the ninth chapter and then it's repeated again in the eighteenth chapter because the instruction is so important. Then in chapter 10, Lord Krishna speaks of the Bhuti Yoga. He describes his opulences, how he is present in many different phenomena of the world. I am mixed in water, I am the light of the sun and the moon, I am all the very mantras. Lord Krishna says of flowing rivers, I am the Ganga, of beasts, I am the lion. Of mountains, I am Meru. Of movable things, I am Himalayas. I am the life of all that lives. I am the intelligence of the intelligent. Lord Krishna goes on describing more than 80 different opulences, ways in which we can remember Krishna through this phenomenal world. <clears throat> Sometimes people will say, I want to see God, I want to see Him. So Prabhupada will say, Prabhupada will say, who has not seen the light of the sun and moon? Everyone has seen that. You, thought you can see God there, the light of the sun. That is Krishna. So, so in this way, Lord Krishna describes how all of this knowledge is not really necessary because he says, with a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire creation. And that single fragment by which Krishna pervades everything, that is the super soul, the Paramahatma, which is in everyone's heart and which is in every atom. Then in chapter 11, Lord Krishna described, Lord Krishna is asked by Arjuna to show his form by which he pervades the whole universe. And Lord Krishna revealed Arjuna the visual. <laughs> Lord Krishna showed the universal form, then Lord Krishna showed Arjuna the fo his forearm form. But neither of these forms were pleasing to Lord 
Arjuna. Arjuna requested to see Krishna in his original two-handed form. Some people think, oh, the Vishwarup, that is the supreme form. Some other people think, oh, the forearm form, that is the supreme form. But actually, it's the two arm form, which is the original form of Lord Shri Krishna. And by Lord Krishna revealing these forms to Arjuna, he's showing Arjuna and showing all of us that his supreme form is the two-armed form. It's superior to the universal form and it's also superior to his four-armed form. And in this way, Lord Krishna then comes to chapter 12, where he will speak the glories of devotional service. And he will describe different alternatives which we can do. If we're not able to do one thing, do another thing. Arjuna wanted to know what's the highest, what's the best thing. So Lord Krishna said, one who thinks of me without deviation, he's the highest. But who can do that? That's very difficult to do. To think of Krishna without deviation, very difficult. So Saranda Bali and Pumay and the Arjuna Nati Krishna the Kenanda, Krishna Zoranda, and then any Padida, and then and then the Pada or we and the Nilaya. And if when we can't do that, then what we should do is practice the principles of bhakti yoga. And in this way we'll develop a desire to attain Krishna. So now the principles of bhakti yoga mean things like worshipping Krishna, chanting his holy name, and reading scriptures, and cooking food and offering it to Krishna. So Krishna and bhakti seva then are not Bhagavan and Nanaka Vendo, our Bhakti seva is going to say Vendo, our Bhakti Samir Pana Vendo, and Priya. We, some people think, oh, because I'm a vegetarian and because I'm not having illicit sex or gambling or taking any intoxicant, so I'm a devotee. That's not enough. In, in order to be a devotee, you have to chant the holy name. So, Maybe so many vegetarians that, that that's not spiritual. That spiritual life means to chant the holy name. And our spiritual life begins when we chant the holy name. So but what if you can't do that? You can't follow the principles of bhakti yoga? Then what should you do? Then Krishna says, then try to work for me. And then by working for me, in that way you develop a desire to come to me. So, But sometimes you can't do that either. Sometimes the family will say, No, don't give to Hare Krishna. Don't give to the temple. They will, they, some families, they won't be in favor of working for Krishna. 
So what should you do in that situation? Then at least give, give to some other charity, and in this way you will develop detachment. So in the morning, we will do the same for the same for the Arpana Bandha to the same for the same for the same. So for the morning, we will do the same for the same for the same. So in the morning, we will do the same for the same for the same for the same for the same. Of course, just simply being detached, that's not spiritual, but it, it helps. It's better than being attached. So, so then Lord Krishna, after chapter 12, he comes to speak about the knowledge, the yoga of knowledge. And by cultivating the yoga of knowledge, the not perfection of knowledge is that we will come to bhakti yoga. bhakti yoga As it says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bahunam Gyamanamanti Gyanavam Mam Prapadyante Vasudev Sarvamiti Samaha. That after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge will surrender to Vasudev Krishna. But such a soul is rare. So Bhagavan Gita Surat Jamana Bhagunam Jamana Mante Jnana Man Mantada Jamana Nam Jana in the Jnana Mante Pada Bhagavan Gita Mante Sarah. So by knowledge, we make progress slowly. It's not so quick. It's going to take time. Krishna said many births. So it's going to take time. That's one thing. And another thing is also, it's not very common. It's rare that one can get perfection, one can achieve the perfection of knowledge. So in the Jnana Mande, Nam Mande, Udane, Adhyadhan to Rambha, Kashnamana Varvishyam, Kala Bhakarada Mande, Ida Nam Mande, Nam Jnana Te Nam Mande, Nam Mande. So the path of knowledge takes time. You have to understand the material nature. We have to work to get free of the material nature. Material nature is made up of three modes, like three colors. Just like if you're a painter, then you use three colors, red, blue, and yellow. And from red, blue, and yellow, you can mix all other colors. So the three modes of nature are goodness, passion, and ignorance. And by combination of these different modes of nature, we come to 8,400,000 different species of life. So in the Jnana Mantra, in the Jnana Jnana Mantra, in the Mantra Gunanga, in the Pati Nga Pesa 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 Pati you get free of passion and ignorance. First of all, get free of the passion and the ignorance, the lust and the anger and the greed. Come up to the mode of goodness and then from the mode of goodness, transcend goodness and come to the level of pure goodness. Suttavana gunatthaki nam maradhaki nam kavam kovam ila leta nam abhidu padarindu. Adi leta nam abhidu vayinda nileta nam sanamadhi. And from the level of pure goodness, then we can actually engage in devotional service for the pleasure of Krishna. So in the So Lord Krishna, in the course of 18 chapters, he spoke 700 slokas. So Krishna, in the so if you read the Bhagavad Gita, and you don't read it, you don't have to read it all, of course, so quickly, but take it gradually. You read one sloka a day. So one sloka a day in two years, 
you can finish the whole book. But one sloka a day is not much to read. You can read one chapter a day if you like. And one chapter, it's 18 chapters in the book. So in 18 days you finish the book. And once you've read the book, then you read it again. So in the Urusalam Padipadaka, and there are many devotees who make a vow every day to read one chapter. Some people will read just only the Sanskrit. Some other people will just read only the, the verse, the translation of the verse. And some other people, they may read the whole thing, all the purports also. But you read one chapter a day, you read the book, you finish it, you read it again. And if you, and once you've read it, Five, six, eight, ten times, then you start to understand the message of Bhagavad Gita. For myself, I have been reading the Bhagavad Gita for more than 50 years. So I was introduced to the Bhagavad Gita when I was a student. I studied at the university in the UK. And we, I was an engineering student. And we had to take a humanities subject. And one of the subjects, one of the courses which was offered was on the Bhagavad Gita. So of course, I didn't understand anything in those days. Later on, I visited our Hare Krishna temple in London, and every evening, devotees used to give class on the Bhagavad Gita. So, Generally, our program in the ISKCON centers is like that. In the morning, we read Srimad Bhagavatam, and in the evening, we read Bhagavad Gita. And Srila Prabhupada, he used to come to London, and he would also lecture on Bhagavad Gita. Every day he would take one verse and he would speak on it and explain everything to us, the meaning of the verse. So Srila Prabhupada, London, Kvante, Andrada, Nandu, Vara, Sarada, Tehanda, Pesuva, Kupriyaga, Vara, Nara, Vara, Sarada, Tehanda, Vara, Sarada, Tehanda. Those lectures are all recorded. You can hear these lectures, the very wonderful lectures, very clear, very nice, Prabhupada explaining everything from the beginning, from the very first look. So in the Bhagavan, the Prabhupada Arti and the Uregal Elam and the Uriyo Hedikin Tade, Sending Adeketa and the Nerevishen Kripunjikala. So tomorrow is the Akadasi day. And it's also the day in which Lord Krishna spoke this Bhagavad Gita more than 5,000 years ago at the place of Kurukshetra in the middle of the battlefield. So we are encouraging all of you that we want all of you also to read the Bhagavad Gita. Tomorrow is a very good day to begin reading, make a vow every day, read something from Bhagavad Gita and learn 
get this knowledge, get this knowledge which is so important for all of us. Knowledge which will help us to live in the world, to have a better life with clear thinking and proper understanding of the nature of the world. So we will stop here and we will ask if there are any questions. So 
healthy materially or spiritually. So we do have to be careful. It may be vegetarian, but is that person a vegetarian himself? The person who's cooking may not be even a vegetarian. And what are his standards of cleanliness? We don't know. And so it's very risky thing to eat food outside. What we do like to do is to eat prasadam. Why prasadam is so important? Because the people who cook prasadam are strict in their habits. They observe strict principles of morality and cleanliness. And their cooking will be offered to Lord Krishna. In this way, it's without any karma. So it's the highest standards of cleanliness and purity. So prasadam is always better. <laughs> so Maharaj on the Punjab is for them. So Mother Prabhu get the Kelly and the number under the dear Sayama Sadlama after the other day. Anna Maharaj and Sabram of the Roman day. So the Sulna Negala and the Idam Puru Leva is in the day, so the Sulna and Amraki Safa, the Kalaka, or the Pachetra and the Safa, and the Murida Luka and the Pachetra and the Samikaran Yan Amritaria, the Sutama Kendara, the Sayama Kendara in the Tarana American day. So Murida Luka and the Pachetra is for Korea, but the Sam is after the Rumba. So this evening we are offering the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, if you want to have a copy or if you want to get a copy, we have Tamil, we have English, and you can get it. So I think so, I think that the Nalikati Gita is in this, so the Munite number one day, and he is Kanskuda, and then he is Bahor Gita, and this special offer will grow. So, I think that the other one day in the Bahor Gita, and then you go to Maharaj Kayatu, and then. So, English and Seri, Tamil and Seri. So, Yar Mundikoringa on the way, Nikam Maracha would pay the Purpur. So, Matongundi, Yara, the only Telgyongan.